I've purchased and reviewed a number of budget mini body cams that cost less than $50 each, but this isn't one of them. This is the Aegis 200, a $250 professional grade body cam sent to me by My Gecko Gear to review. As you can see from the size of this quarter, it is a relatively small and compact body cam. In the testing today, we're going to see if it's worth your coin. Okay, so this is what we get in the box. This is the Aegis 200 body cam by My Gecko Gear. And let's just take a look at the packaging here. Oh, nice, nicely designed uh, cardboard box here. It has some information I think would be that is um, kind of illuminating. One is that uh, here are some of the occupations that they think that this product would be geared towards security personnel general contractor, property manager, so that's who the manufacturer thinks would be most interested in this product. Now, in the back, it has some of its key features. It is a, it uh, records in 1440 Ultra HD, uh, has infrared night mode, as well as it has a password protected system, so that's interesting. So if somebody gets a hold of this uh, cam, they can't get into the footage unless they know the password. We'll see how that, how that works out. And it has a 13 and a half hour battery life, which is higher than any of the mini body cams that I was reviewing previously, which I only think topped out about four hours. So this is a whole half day, or really pretty much a whole day of use. So that's, that's, that's pretty good. So let's take a look at what you actually get inside. Okay, let's take off the sleeve. Opens up, we have the manual, the user manual in English and Francaise. Yeah, a CD-ROM. Well, I'm guessing this has some USB drivers on it. Uh, I won't be able to check this because I don't have a CD-ROM device anymore. None of my computers have CD-ROMs. But if you happen to know what's in this disk, please let me know in the comments. And we have the device itself, which is surprisingly small, actually. Uh, for some reason, based on the box size, I thought it was going to be bigger. But it is actually fairly small. I mean, it's it's larger than any of the mini um, body cams that I reviewed previously. This is about the size of, oh, say, it's, I think it's, this is definitely larger than my old uh, first generation GoPro. Um, but it, it's not too bad. It is size of, has, has some definite heft to it. Let's see what else we get. Okay, we have a, oh, this is interesting, a mini USB cable. I thought that would, this would be a USB-C. So this does make me think that uh, they're using a little bit older, old school technology here. Um, well, you know, it's not necessarily bad. Old school also means more reliable because it's more proven. So, but they do use a mini USB, not even a micro USB, a mini USB cable. But, uh, you know, I kind of like those. They, they are very robust. Um, has a wall charger. It has a clip, and now this would secure toward on the back of this to allow you to clip it on to um, to your to your clothing or somewhere. And I think that um, let's see if this rotates. Attach it on. Yeah, it rotates. So very much like a walkie-talkie. It clips on that way. All right, and yeah, and. There is a charging base, which you would stick this on very much like a walkie-talkie. And a larger clip, a more robust, I'm guessing more of a duty clip. Or, oh, for um, for a shoulder, I'm guessing that's why it's curved. So for if you have um, a epaulets on your uniform or um, on your the shoulder on, on your uh, vest or harness, you could attach this on uh, thusly. It hooks in. So, okay, there you go. So we're gonna charge this up and uh, we'll see how well it works. Okay, it is eight in the morning and as you can see from the white LED that this is fully charged. Now the specs say that it has a 13.5 hour battery life and a nine hour memory capacity. So we will be testing both out. Uh, I'll be wearing the unit all day and into uh, the night and we'll see if uh, it lives up to expectations. That sounded very 16-bit. Anyway, so 
there is password protection on these, and this is presumably so that, uh, you know, if you are using this as a duty device or as a professional device, if somebody gets a hold of this and pulls it off of uh, your uniform, they can't get into uh, the video and erase it. Of course, they could probably try to destroy this or throw it away, but notwithstanding, um, there is password protection. So when you try to change the menu, which is the M button here, you will be presented with a password uh, screen. Now, this is the um, the button to change the parameters, and this is to cycle through. And just as a pro tip here, uh, the default where it, it, the, uh, it starts is zero. It's hidden with those asterisks. But um, if you press the this button, it'll cycle through. It'll go from, uh, since it starts at zero, it'll go to one, two, three, four, five. So just as a pro tip here, they're all already set to zero. So, and the default password is zero, 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 zero. Oh, here it is, zero, 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 zero. So all you really need to do is do the select button, the OK button, and there you go. So you're in the main menu here, and I want to... There is a menu item to change the password, and once that is changed, well, the only way you can get back into the menu is by putting in the correct password. In fact, you can't even access any of the files to download them without the correct password, and there's no way to delete the files without inputting the correct password. That's a security feature you won't find in budget body cams. All right, and we are off to the races. So for the next 13 plus hours, I'm going to be carrying or wearing the camera, and it clips on fairly easily, but as you can see, it's hardly discreet. Now, it's only about the size of a GoPro, but, you know, it's kind of obvious that you are wearing a body cam. Now, you can kind of mitigate that by wearing something dark, uh, so it kind of blends in, but, you know, it's, it's going to be noticeable. The alligator clip it comes with is pretty rugged and feels pretty sturdy, so you can rotate it and wear it sideways clipped into a buttoned shirt. But if you're wearing a uniform with shoulder epaulets, what you want to do is attach the special epaulet clip. It offers 180 degrees of rotation plus articulation. So what you want to do is you want to clip it into your epaulet and it has a little hook there. Hook that onto your epaulet and it provides a very secure hold. Using the articulating arm you can reposition the unit and change the angle and you're ready to go. I wore this for the whole day and it did record my everyday mundane life. You know, picking up the kids, doing the laundry, taking out the trash, blah blah blah. But I also wanted to share some sample footage that might be more in line with if you were, say, doing security work, let's say at a shopping center. Now, one of the things I noticed when watching this footage is just the amount of wind noise that was coming up. And it was not a particularly windy day, it's just that this unit seems to pick up a lot of wind noise. And you'll notice the obvious shakiness in the footage. That camera is hanging from my shoulder uh, attached to my epaulette. And this camera, this body cam, like most body cams, does not have the anti-shake features found in most modern action cameras and some new cell phones. But in the realm of body cams, this is pretty standard. If you happen to know of a body cam that does have an anti-shake camera, please let me know, uh, leave a comment. So let's take a look at that same scene at night so you can see how it works in night mode. And it actually works pretty well. Its night or low light capture capability is actually better than any of the action cams I own. Here we're looking at a pitch black hallway at night lit up with the onboard infrared emitters. Here we see the infrared illuminators lighting up a backyard at night. That is a tree 30 feet up on the hillside. Here you see how well the camera handles light transition, going from bright outdoors into a dark underground garage, and it handles it very well. And as we can see, even in an underground garage, the footage that we get with the camera is very well balanced and detailed, albeit with the obvious camera shake. I'm doing my six foot double drop test. I'm holding the camera above my head and dropping it twice onto dirt and rocks. And here we're seeing the actual footage from the camera itself as it's getting dropped. And here is the second drop. 
and it passed. The unit is IP65 rated, and that 65 is actually two numbers, 6 being its dustproof rating, 5 being its waterproof rating, and I had misread that. IP6 means that it is resistant to high pressure water jets, but the unit is IP5 rated, which is only resistant to low pressure water. Oops. Well, despite that, it appeared to pass the test. It survived the high pressure water, still intact and still functioning except that it didn't. An hour later, condensation moisture appeared underneath the front lens as well as one of the infrared emitters. So while all this was happening, the unit was still on, it was still functioning, just with hampered performance because fog is covering up the front of the lens and affecting the footage it was taken. So did it fail the test? No, actually no, it didn't, because it's only IP5 rated, only rated for low pressure water jets. So I exceeded the test parameters there. So lesson here is don't spray it with high pressure water. It'll survive rain, it'll survive splashes, and apparently it'll even survive somebody who doesn't know the difference between IP6 and IP5. Okay, before I get started, I'd just like to ask you to please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. And the best thing you can do is actually share this video with your friends who are sort of gearheads and get them to subscribe to the channel. Okay, so this is a little bit of an unusual conclusion and insight section of my videos because I'm actually recording it on the Aegis 200 itself because I wanted to show you what the highest resolution and image quality this is capable of. I've got it set at 4K at super fine resolution as opposed to normal. Um, now, as you saw, I think personally the uh, default resolution at 1080p and uh, normal is perfectly fine. Uh, it's as good, if not better, than any of the body cams that I've tested previously. But if you do need that extra, uh, uh, the extra resolution, um, by all means, this ha this is what it's capable of. Now, um, if you do set it at that, you're going to get less than nine hours of um, video files on your machine because the the um, um, the files are larger. So just bear that in mind. Now that sort of leads me into my main, some some of my cr main criticisms about this camera, um, and I'd like to thank my Gecko Gear for sending this out for me to review. But I'm not going to pull any punches just because they sent me a camera. Um, 32 gigabytes, while nine hours is you know sufficient and you know as as long that's as long as most people's typical work shift. Um, some people's shifts are can be a little bit longer, and if um, this thing is password locked and you're not, uh, you don't have it set to write over old files, um, nine hours is not going to be sufficient. So um, they should have put 64 gigs on here. I mean, memory is cheap nowadays. Um, come on, 64. Put, make them 64. And, or even 128. I mean, they're, it's not that much more expensive. It you know, adds another, what, from a manufacturer standpoint, adds another $10 to the cost of this. Um, but, you know, that's just me. Um, so, more memory, that would have been nice, and the other criticism, the main criticism I have about this is the image quality. Um, good, actually, F first let me say that this is as good or better than any um, body cams, and even some cheap action cams aren't as good looking in terms of footage as this. A little, a, a bit grainier than, um, let's say, a GoPro or an Osmo, um, so there's that. But the biggest downside is that this doesn't have any image stabilization. Um, the newer GoPro 9 and even the 8 and the Osmo action um, have great image stabilization. And you would have think you would think that at about since this unit is about the same price as buying a GoPro 9, you know, just a little bit of image stabilization would have gone a long way. So that is my biggest uh, peeve with this. But it's no worse than any other action event, sorry, in any other security uh, body cam that I've tested so far. None of them have image stabilization, and you really have to go into uh, some obscure high end ones. Now, if you have uh, are, are aware of any action cams in this price range um, that do have image stabilization, please let me know in the comments. But I've only seen those in action cams. So, um, again, it would have been nice if they would have included that. And I'm sure, um, hopefully, they're they're working on that. And the last pet peeve I have about this is the sound quality. Could be a lot better. Picks up wind noise way too much. Um, low sounds way too much. So that is very distracting. 
um, especially if you're you know walking around and, and as you heard on just from just wind noise um, it it totally picks picks that up way too much so on the good side now this unit is very rugged it is uh, as or more rugged than any action cam I've, I've used it uh, has um, a really robust exterior but more importantly it is password protected which I haven't seen on any action cam if you know about one please again let me know in the comments but you can't get into the menu of this device or even get the files out of this device without a password so that is a really useful feature if uh, you know you don't want people tampering with the uh, the video or images or anything you stored by this camera by accident um, you do need a password to, to get in unless you disable you there is a menu feature to allow you to disable the passwords but obviously that is a feature that that if that's a feature you want you that's a feature you don't want to disable so just note that you can't even get access to the files in the camera through the USB port without the password so that's that's a key feature uh, and the other thing uh, that really sets this apart from any action cam is the battery life. Uh, this states that it has 13 and a half hours of battery life. I've gotten so far 15 hours and it's still going as you can see I haven't recharged this. Uh, it's been 15 hours and it's still going and it's still saying it's got still about a third or a quarter of, of battery capacity left so that is actually amazing. I've never gotten more than like an hour or hour and a half out of my uh, GoPro or Osmo so um, that is, for that reason alone, uh, I would pick this over any action cam uh, and all the security features. So is this camera right for you? Well, hopefully this video helped you to decide. And uh, if you enjoyed watching this again, please hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Moondog out. Hey, if you like this video, please share it on social media. You know, Facebook, forums, MeWe, whatever platform you're on. And if you want to see more videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.